Hey everyone, in today's video, we're going to install this new Whirlpool microwave hood combination, or a micro hood as we call it. Um, just bought it from Lowe's. We're gonna go ahead, unpackage the thing inside and get to it. Okay, we got the micro hood in the kitchen here. Um, it shows you how to open it here. It says cut on this line and you will be lifting the box up and over. The reason you don't wanna just rip into it is there's a template actually up here that you'll use for getting the holes right on the wall behind the microwave. So I'm gonna go ahead and use our carton knife. All right, like I mentioned, you're gonna need this template. It's on the outside of the cardboard box. So we're gonna go ahead and cut that out right now. And we'll use that a little bit later when it comes to getting the wall prepped and the underside of the cabinets. Okay, we got the packaging off. We have my brace sitting here. Um, the first part of the instructions say to just get the mounting bracket out, which I have here. It says yours may be taped to the back. I just checked to make sure that nothing was taped in the back of mine at all. So all they have is this strip here for mounting it. And it says you should tape the door shut at this point as well so it doesn't come open during installation. Then it goes on to talk about um, installing the, the blower so that uh, you can exhaust it either into a wall or into a ceiling. Um, we're not going to do that. It's going to be recirculated in our case, so um, no changes need to be made with the blower dampers or anything. And this piece here won't be needed. Um, just as if you're going to be venting it outside somewhere. So I'm going to be not talking about that. I'm going to skip through the section that's about uh, how to install the wall vent or ceiling vent or roof vent. And we're going to move on to talking about mounting this. Okay, the next thing to look at is locating the studs that you have in your wall behind your microwave. The book says you need at least one wall stud in there. I mean, this span, most people will have two, but it's possible you might have one. Here we have two, so I've got a stud there and I've got a stud right here. And then you also should mark the center line, which I have written as new center line. And then if your cabinet has an overhang in the front like mine does, there's a little bit of a lip here you need to space down the back uh, there. So I used a level to go from here back to here and marked a new line. So this is the line that's, that's level with the front of my cabinet here. Then from that point on, you can use the template to mark where you need holes. My other holes here are from previous uh, microwaves installed here. And then I also had to find, I have a, a sewer vent stack here that I was trying to avoid because I don't want to put any screws into that. So that's what my situation looks like. We'll get the template going. Okay, at this point, when you have your studs and everything located, you want to line up your template center line with the center line you marked up there. Uh, and then you have to mark the holes for the bracket, the end holes, they call it A and B, and then the bottom as well. Um, making sure that if you drop your line down a little bit to account for overhang, you have to um, move your template down as well. So in my situation, I'm just at the top of my tile, I actually had to remove a line of tile from this microwave, but um, you can see that's about where I am. So you take a pencil, poke it through A, poke it through B, make a line on the bottom, and that's gonna be what you use to mount your bracket. Okay, one thing to pay attention to is if you need a spacer behind here or not, so your microwave sits out where it should be. Uh, the book says if your cabinets are greater than 12 inches, deep or less than to less than 14 inches deep, you don't need a spacer, you just mount the microwave directly to your wall. If your cabinets are 14 inches or greater, um, you need to put a spacer back there. So your microwave sits flush, actually a little more than flush. If you have a, a recirculating vent that blows out the top, you can't have that be obstructed. So in our case, we do need to add a spacer. Um, you can buy them, it gives the part number there. I had a two inch wide Ikea spacer from before. I wanted to go a little narrower than that because this microwave is actually a little bit deeper than our previous one. I went to a two by four, which is an inch and a half wide. 
uh, and I wrap that metal on here so it'll sit like that um, in the back and then you mount the support bracket actually to the spacer. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this mounted to the wall and then we can retake our measurements based on the template um, and mark it on here so I know where that bracket has to go. Okay, you see I got my spacer in here. I also put a block up here just so I have something to put the, push the microwave against when I install it. Um, so now you take your mounting bracket, place it in line, line up your center line. They give you these triangles here to line that up with. And then you should see where you mark the holes, the end holes on either side. And then it says to mark other holes that line up on your studs. So in my case, I have solid wood behind here, so I don't have to mark in a certain location. But if you only had a couple studs or one, you have to mark that. It says the preferred holes to use um, are these two end ones on the top, this one and this one, and then also the ones next to this little pop-out thing you have here between that and the hooks. Um, if you have studs, you, I don't know how you're gonna actually get lucky enough to be on those. But in my case where I have solid wood support, I can use those four holes for mounting it. So um, at this point you just mark it and then it has you go back. And if you're going into studs, you should pre-drill the 3 16th bit. Um, and then you can install your screws that came with it. Or I have screws here as well I'll be using. Okay, if you're just going into one or two studs, they give you leg screws um, that need to be you need to pre drill before you install them to go in. And if you don't have any um, studs or if you have one stud and you want to secure it a little more, you can use the toggle bolts they give you, um, which you, you drill a pretty large size hole in your drywall, insert it through the hole, and then these spring out, and you can tighten it up against the back of the drywall and get a little extra support that way. Um, what I'm going to be using, because I can put four screws in, it just uh, two inch decking screws. It's gotta be able to hold like 150 pounds. I'm not worried about that with these. So that'll be how I install it. I could have my first screw in just as a check to make sure my micro is gonna be level. I'm putting my level on the bracket before I screw in the next one. And it looks really good. It lines up perfectly with my other end hole. So I know I can just use that and I'll stay level. Okay, with the bracket installed, now we're gonna use this template to mark our holes for the upper cabinet. So what you do is you align the arrows uh, toward the back and then make sure your center line lines up with the center line up here. Um, I'm gonna hold mine down just a little bit so that I hit my block, line the center line up. And then there's three points you need to mark. There's these holes D and E, which are for the mounting screws for the microwave. And then there's a big one, like an inch and a half, Hole, which is G, that's where the cord comes out of the microwave. Um, in my case, I'm not going to be marking G, and I'll show you why in a minute, but for now we'll mark the pencil E and B, like that, and we know where those holes have to go. Okay, because I had a GE microwave here before, I, I have a hole for the cord. It's a little different spacing, though. It's back here. However, because I have this little bit of an overhang we talked about before, I'm gonna use that to have the cord come up and enough space for it to run over here and go out without having to have another hole where G was marked on that template. So I can avoid that. And then I see I have my markings here for my hole D and E right there. I'm gonna go ahead and mark those. I mean, they are marked, excuse me. I'm go ahead and drill those out the three eighths inch bit right now. Okay, those holes are, are drilled. If you were worried about um, poking through or, or the breakthrough on the other side of the bit when you go through the top, you could just use a small bit, like an eighth inch or quarter inch even, drill through it, and then go, once you're through, go from the top down. So any um, breakout that you have around the hole, it's usually on the back side, would be down here rather than up there. Um, we don't, we just store a bunch of stuff up there, so I'm not worried about how it appears, but, um, some people might be, so that's just a tip to use. And if you haven't done it by now, it's a good idea to tape shut your door so you don't get smacked in the face by a door um, when you are trying to install it. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is install the microwave itself. So um, what you do is it's best to have two people, maybe three, you need to get the microwave on the hooks right here, and then that'll bear most of the weight, and then you tip it up into place. And while you're tipping up, it up into place, you have to have someone else fishing the cord up through your hole. And then once you're up here, you need to install 
your bolts, your mounting bolts. You put a washer on it and drop it down through the hole and then you can tighten it up and that'll then take the rest of the weight off. Um, if you have any problems when you get it up there, if it doesn't seat up flush to here or something, you may have to adjust your mounting plate again. So you have to take the microwave down and redo that. Um, but that's what we're gonna try next. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing lifted in. Okay, let's test this thing out and see if it works. The water's boiling, so the microwave works. So the only thing left to do here is just take the, some of the plastic off the um, stainless steel, do a little cleanup underneath here. Um, I'm gonna put a bead of caulking right at the tile line there. Um, just kind of finish it off a little bit. Other than that, that is how you install a Whirlpool microwave oven. I hope it helps you out. Thanks for watching.